Hi, my name is Greg Greenberg with Hanna Instruments, and today I'd like to show you the HI991001 waterproof portable meter that measures pH and temperature. Let me show you what's in the box. When you receive your meter, it's going to come in this rugged plastic carrying case with various instruction guides, manuals, and the meter itself. Let me introduce what's inside the box. First of all is the calibration certificate for the meter, the testing certificate for the electrode, the electro electrode instruction guide. Inside the box is the meter itself along with three batteries and a titanium probe that has both pH and temperature capabilities. Along with that is the cleaning solution, buffers, and the all-important instruction guide along with a quick reference guide if needed. Next, let me introduce the features of the product. The 991001 has some really nice features to it. First of all, there's an L a large LCD display for easy reading of your pH and temperature. Simple two-button operation, and when you turn the meter on its side, here's a rugged connector for the electrode and the battery compartment. What I really like about this meter is that when you turn it upside down, there's a diagram here that shows you which way the batteries go in. Next, what I'm going to do is connect the electrode, put the batteries in, turn it on, and show you how it works. Now that I've connected the probe and put the batteries in, I'm going to turn the meter on. The first thing that's going to come up is the battery indicator energy level. When that's done flashing, it's going to go into the measurement mode. You're going to see the pH reading, the temperature, and a stability indicator. Now, a really nice feature about this meter is the fact that it has auto instructions. And there's, there's two items here. Number one is for calibration, and the next one is for setup. I'm going to take you into the calibration mode next. Before I calibrate my pH probe, it's very important to condition it first. So what I've done is I've taken the liberty of putting the probe in a storage solution. In this case, it's HI70300. Now, if you don't have a storage solution handy, that's okay. It's, it's fine to use a buffer solution as well. I'm going to let the probe rest in the storage solution for approximately two hours. After two hours, I'm going to take the probe out, rinse it off in purified water, and just blot it lightly on a paper towel so it dries. I'm going to go ahead and put it in buffer 7.01 turn my meter on and let it go into its measurement mode. Once it goes into its measurement mode, I'm going to hold down the left hand button for three seconds until it goes into cal and I'm going to let it go. Now it's asking for seven, so I have the probe in seven and once it recognizes seven, it's going to ask for, for four. So at this point, if I wanted to, and if I just wanted a one point calibration, I could hit the left hand button and go back into the measurement mode or if I want a two point calibration I can put it into a four or a ten. Okay, now it's recognizing four. Okay, now we're back in the measurement mode. Next I'd like to show you some of the setup features. Next I'd like to show you some setup options for the HI991001. Right now my meter is in measurement mode and what I'm simply going to do is push the left hand button and I'm going to hold it down for six seconds until it takes me into the temperature mode. At that point, depending on what I want to choose, I can push the right hand button and choose either Fahrenheit or Celsius by toggling back and forth. Once I have my desired temperature setting, what I'm going to do is push the left hand button and that's going to allow me to choose my buffer set. So in the case here of 6.86, that's going to recognize the buffers of 4, 6.86, and 9.18. In the case of 7.01, that's going to recognize the buffer sets of 4, 7, and 10. So once I choose my temperature settings and my buffer set, I simply push the left hand button and escape back into the measurement mode. One final note. After you're done using your probe, it's very important to keep it conditioned. What I like to do is simply take some storage solution, pour it into the cap that the electrode comes with, 
Now, if you don't have storage solution, it's okay as well to use buffers. So after you put the buffers or the storage solution into the cap, you simply place the cap onto the electrode and you're ready to go for the next time. Now, in case you ever have erratic readings with your probe, it could be due to some kind of buildup on it. And in that case, we have application specific cleaning solutions. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed my demonstration on the 991001. If you have any more questions, please contact your local handoff.